in again. This is our new setup. We're really excited about uh, kind of the studio production value that we've put together here to give you guys something more uh, in depth uh, as we do, but also in a, in a better setting that I think you're really going to enjoy. Um, so today it's about July's market update. July has been um, a different month and I put it there in the title. It says the good, the bad and what we're keeping an eye on. And that's exactly the tale that I want to talk about today. I want to story tell just a little bit to tell you kind of what has been happening. So this year to date in 2007, we're seeing still more sales activity than we did at this point in 2016. So that's good news, right? Things are trending upwards. Sales activity is continuing to grow. Um, this was driven in a big way though. And if you've been following the data and following our market updates for the last few months, it's really been driven by January through April's months. They were much bigger than they were the, in 2016. And then May, June, July, unfortunately, they did a little bit better, but nowhere near the, uh, the gap that was created from January to April. So that's the good, right? Now the bad, I guess not really the bad, right? I, I put it in the title as the bad, but it's not really bad. July's sales numbers have slumped in comparison to last year. Now, how does this matter to you and why should you care? Well, this is the first time in um, this year that a month's sales figures have been less than last year. So that's the first time this happened. So that's where I see it started to slump. Um, you know, it's not too shocking to me, honestly, when I look at the trends and we dive deeper. The inventory at the beginning of the year had us launching less new listings in comparison to the prior year. Um, from January through April, this was really the case. It started now to reverse the other way. From May, June, and July, we've seen inventory this year be higher than last year. So if you see that three months in a row, now we have a trend. Right? It's not just a data point. It's a true trend where inventory is climbing. Now with July, which I just told you, slumping and having less sales this July than last year, so for the first time in a month in 2017 versus 2016, this is where we might start to see a bit of a shift. So what price ranges are we seeing a pullback in this activity? Now, for the most part, I want you to know that all price ranges, um, basically, for the most part, all price ranges have been in the double-digit percentage increases over last year's figures, kind of month after month. This continues to be the case in a big way for homes 600,000 up to 1.5. Where we've started to see things is that middle market, the average price points, that's where we've seen the middle part of the market start to slow down. Now we're seeing less than 10% increases year over year, and we're, a lot of them are 7, 8, and 9. So where the upper part of the market has continued to do very well in comparison to last year, the middle part, the average part of the market, has started to shift downwards. Uh, not downwards, sorry, but just slow up. So I guess the question I would pose, and some people might be thinking, is, why is this, right? Why is this? So a few things come to mind. The Bank of Canada has made some real changes this year and it's made it harder for people to qualify right now. Um, you know, basically people with less disposable income, the, you know, people around the average price brackets, um, you know, they have a tighter overall debt to, debt to uh, income ratio. When that debt to income ratio is tighter, guess what? When the government tweaks their uh, yeah, tweaks the, the dials a little bit, it affects that, that group of people a lot more. And, and in Calgary, the average price points are around that 450 to 500, and that's exactly where we're seeing things tighten up. Um, the other thing about this is why, is rates have gone up too. So um, the bond rates have increased, and the bond rates increased because there's actually um, good news happening in the Canadian economy as a whole which then the long-term bond rates drive fixed rates up. Our dollar's getting better, and guess what? Our price point, we're going from 2.5% fixed rates over to 
3% now, and that's a big bump for some people, got, uh, coupled with the changes the government has placed. So all this is contrib contributing to a bit of a slowdown in that average price point. So just something to be mindful of. Um, between the three market segments, now the three market segments are number one, detached homes, number two, apartment market, and number three, the attached product, infills and row houses. So the detached market continues to be very strong and stable. It's doing very well and it's continued to pace along at a great clip. Right? It makes up the bulk of the transactions in Calgary and so that's nice to see that it has a strong foundation and is continuing to do well. The apartment market, which I've talked about all year long, continues to be uh, oversupplied and unfortunately declining as far as price points. You have to price extremely well um, to differentiate yourself and to get sales to happen uh, this year. The attached market continues to have both highs and lows. See the non-condo product, the non-condo product, sorry, I wish I could speak, um, like infills, right? They're continuing to do very well. Um, but it's those attached homes, the, the row homes, that are still struggling along a little bit. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for joining, buddy. Good to see you. Rob, oh, I see you popped in there too. Awesome. Very good. So with those three market segments and the, the quick little summary that I just gave you about them, why is this happening in each of these markets? And it's very quick. It's the detached market, the inventory continues to be lower, 11% lower than last year, and sales are up about 9%. So it's holding its price points very nicely. The, ap the apartment market, why it's declining is because inventory is still rising. It's almost 9% higher than last year. And then the sales is up, which is a good thing. I've commented about that, but it's not enough to off, like kind of to outpace the, the inventory, which is why we're still seeing the apartment segment drop. And then the attached market is doing very much similar to the detached market, which is inventories are down still, fantastic, and sales are up, so prices are stabilizing. So that. So I wanted to talk about why this matters to you as sellers, right? And then also why will this matter to you as buyers? What does it mean? So first of all, as a seller, knowing what we just talked about, uh, and maybe I'll pull up um, a couple graphs here to talk about this a little bit more. Yeah, so this graph, this is an interesting one. Um, only thing I really want you to take a peek on is right there at the very end where I put the arrow. And this is, this is a graph that goes back all the way back to January 2002. But the big part is here, you're seeing a green line and you're seeing a red line. The green line is an inventory trend. The red line is the price trend. I thought these were gonna converge. And when they were gonna converge, prices would continue to pull upwards and inventory was gonna to continue to drop. But because we've seen this new trend emerge of inventory climbing three months in a row, if you look really, really closely there, they've now started to, instead of do this and cross, they're actually starting to go away. So now when you see it converging, I mean, some diverging is you're gonna, we are potentially at risk for um, a slowdown and potentially even a price correction. If I was going to go Nostradamus on us, that might be the case if inventory continued to go the direction it is, especially in these slower months. So yeah, that's the one graph. I guess to point that out a little bit more, I'll pull up graph two that um, kind of just outlines the trend here. So you're seeing a simple graph and one's coming down and one's going up. The one that's coming down, that's showing that total sales um, July 2015, July 2016, July 2017, each of these Julys, we've seen slower sales activity. Now the flip side is the inventory is climbing on the bottom one. So July 2015, July 2016 again, and then today our inventory is higher. So when that is happening, that is just telling us a little bit more of the story that's truly happening. We haven't seen any price corrections, but if this continues, this is where we might see, over the balance of the fall season, some slowdown. Um, let me just see if I'm going to wait for one graph or if I'm going to bring that up a little bit later. Yeah, let me pull up this one, third graph again. So 
again, being an engineer, you know, I like data, but I wanted to visually represent this as easily as I could for you. And all I want you to see is this band at the very top that I've made and that arrow. So there's this gap here. And you're seeing from um, July 2016, which is the lower bar, and then July 2017, there's quite a gap there. Uh, and this is bigger than I'd like to see and something I want to keep our eyes on as we look forward. And if that continues to widen, we're going to see, again, a chance that prices might correct a little bit or at least stabilize and not see much of a chance for growth. Yeah, so I'll leave you for the graphs. You've had enough graphs for now. <laughs> so yeah, so if I was selling my house, what would I take away with? What would I talk about? So knowing that the inventory is higher, sales activity has started to slow. It means a few things. So number one, buyers have just more selection and more selection than they have at this time of year, uh, going back quite a few years now. Right? Buyers have more selection. They also have more time to make their selection because there's less urgency in the market. So again, this is important. And buyers can be pickier. Now with buyers, we should be picky anyways, but we can afford because of the inventory and the sales activity dropping to even be pickier. So if I was selling my house, I would ensure the little things are taken care of, right? I would, I would not leave things undone or incomplete because we don't want to give a reason for a buyer to move past your property, especially with that much inventory. And especially now if you're an apartment owner and trying to sell, you need to ensure all of those things that are done and could catch a buyer's eyes are completed, painted, touched up, fixed. Don't leave it to chance because there's just too much competition out there. The other one is curb appeal, right? So when this inventory is super high and sales activity is dropping, curb appeal is massive. So the majority of the places, if you're looking online, when you see a home for the first time, what do you see? Yeah, you see the outside image of the property. So if that's the case, you need to ensure the curb appeal when you have your home professionally photographed or videoed that it looks stellar so that you can cut through the clutter of all of that inventory that's out there, right? So that's you know, two little things that I wanted to kind of you to leave with as far as a seller in today's market. And then obviously you're going to need to price properly. This is going to be very important for you. Now, again, this is a little plug, but if you don't have a real estate agent that can help you with these things and isn't providing you guidance around this and is telling you a different story about the market, you may want to consider reconsider that. And this time of the year is where a lot of uh, listings expire because they've uh, hired a realtor and they put a three-month contract and it probably goes to the tail end of the summer. Um, great time to remarket is back in here in September and getting this information now and making the adjustments that I just talked about and then relaunching your property with a realtor that understands how to take advantage of today's market and sell could be crucial for your success. So for buyers, buyers what does this market mean? Well honestly this is good for you, right? You have the pick of the litter, um, with the sellers getting more motivated, this is a natural occurrence throughout the balance of a summer season that sellers who are on the market and haven't sold, they get more motivation because they've been trying to make this transaction and this transition in life for months now. So it's, it's just natural that you're going to see them um, want to, to drop off, um, you know, discount and just to make something happen. So this is a great thing for you as a buyer. So one tip for you. Come armed with your financing prepared. Have it ready. Have done the pre-approval with a mortgage broker, not just a pre-approval with your bank. That's not good enough because they don't actually look deep enough into your, into your credentials and your ability to finance. They don't do that. A broker will dig deeper for you. So if you can come armed with great financing and ready to rock in a market where you know inventory has risen, and sales activity has dropped, you're gonna be able to snag a great property at a very fair price. Now, I say fair, because I don't want you to think there's big discounts out there. That's not the case. Once in a while, you'll see that, but it's a great fair price right now. Right? Sellers don't have you under their barrel. You don't quite have them yet, but you have selection. 
Yeah. Um, I wanted to point out, so I've showed you those three graphs. There's a fourth graph, but I, I don't want to quite get to that yet before I go on. There's a few. Um, actually, yeah, let's pull that up. I'm going to pull that one up because it makes sense right now. So I talked about at the beginning a bit of the State of the Union, what's going on. This graph outlines a few things for you. Um, let me pull it up on my screen so I can see it too. Yeah, so this graph I talked about detached row homes and attached products and apartments. So I want you to look to see, this is year over year price growth. So when I talk about the apartment market struggling a little bit, this points it out in a big, big way. So that box down on the corner um, that you can see there is highlighted as pretty much seven of the eight markets in the attached market, uh, or the apartment market, sorry, are in a decline in position. There's only one. It's a bit of the star. Um, everything else, though, tends to be above the line, which means they're all, all markets between detached, semi-detached, row homes, and total Calgary residential. For the most part, we're seeing positivity here in price growth. There is a superstar here, and this one is um, the city center properties in the semi-detached uh, market segment. So, wow, like it's kicking butt in a big way, 10% year-over-year price growth. Now, a big reason for that is last year was really tough on them. Developers kind of ran away when there wasn't a lot of great news happening. And now they're back in line and back rocking it. So what's one of the hottest dist districts out there right now? People like to know hottest communities, uh, things like that. Well, in the detached market, um, it's actually quite interesting. The southeast side of the marketplace is, was doing really, really well. Um, the apartment segment, the best um, the best that we can do is in the east side of the city. Uh, it's having the best kind of sell through. Um, for the detached market, it's the west side of the city. Yeah. And, and then for the row houses, townhouses, it's in the deep south. Now, um, how about year over year price appreciation and which ones are best? So for the detached market, it's the west side. The west side is one of the few areas that it's actually beyond recession pricing, uh, like pre-recession pricing. So that's really good to see. Um, it's having almost 7% year-over-year appreciation growth. In comparison to the whole citywide detached market is about two, right? So it's, it's doing really quite well. Um, the city center, the west, and the northwest are the top three for detached properties. Um, for year-over-year price growth, again, apartments lead the way in the West. Uh, so yeah, something for you guys to consider. How about this? Couple of the hottest communities. This is always fun. Now when I say hottest communities, what do I mean by this? I mean for the new listings that come online um, in comparison to how many uh, have sold, this is a, a metric that we use. So if, if 10 houses got listed and 10 got sold, that means 100% sell through. This would be very good. Um, so in a case like this, this month, we've actually got four markets that are, they're doing really quite well that I wanted to point out. Chinook Park, Diamond Cove, Linden and Staveley, they're all over 200%. So that means if they listed 20, they would have sold 40, right? That means the, the inventory that was already there has sold through plus all the new inventory. So when a community is doing things like this and there's a great turnover, that means the days on market are super slow, and that means people are actively pursuing that community in a big way. So that's, that's nice to see. The other thing I look at when I look at hottest communities is those that have really low inventory. And I've pointed this out a few times, and I've pointed this out to my agents if they're looking to prospect. But for those of you that are homeowners and uh, are considering a sale, Dover, Queensland, Riverbend, and Charleswood. These four communities are doing very, very well. The inventory is extremely low. Um, and in particular, Riverbend. It's been hot for a little while. And I think I know why. It's just beyond the inner city borders. It's got major access to a couple great big roadways. And then you've got Quarry Park that is live and exciting and uh, adding some great dimension to the community that wasn't there a few years ago. So it's 
inventory levels is less than half of a month. So heck yeah, if you're going to be selling in that community, you're going to do really well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the market update for, for this time. So it's the good, the bad, and then what we're keeping an eye on. And I like to talk about positive things. I like to talk about what's going well in the marketplace. But I also, I'm not nervous to discuss and be openly honest with you guys if I see some concerns. And with inventory climbing, I'm going to be watching and keeping my eye on the next few months as we go through August, September, October to see what is happening. And what my hope is, is that inventory declines in a few ways. This is time of year that a lot of people decide to pull off the market for a little bit. Uh, and I hope some of that happens. And I also hope there's a bit of a pickup in August, September and October sales figures and what we prove that July was just a bit of a blip. If that's the case, prices will stay nice and stable uh, and we won't have any strong concern. So guys, as always, I really appreciate you tuning in. And uh, if you want more specific information about your marketplace, your price ranges, um, please reach out, comment, send us a message because this is just scratching the surface. This is my macro view of Calgary. Um, and I hope it's enlightening to a little bit of the pace of what's going on. But again, please reach out. Let's continue the discussion offline. And uh, again, if this was value, look again for next month we'll be doing another update. And please share to your friends. So guys, appreciate it. Much love, and we will talk to you soon.